Monday Night Football. The Bears suck, man. They really suck. And I don't want to just sit here and just be like, man, they suck. And I hate Matt Nagy because I think people are probably just sick of hearing that. But I really don't have much more to say besides the Bears aren't good. And Matt Nagy, I fucking hate you. Well, I can give you a spin zone. The Rams look like they could win the Super Bowl based off of tonight. Well, Rams look pretty good. Okay, they do. Matt Stafford, it was it was very refreshing to see Matt Stafford play on a competent team for a change. Yes. Except... When he danced after he threw that first touchdown pass, that bomb down the field, I've never seen Matt Stafford that happy. I don't, I don't know how to process it. Because yes, it's almost like he's a rookie quarterback this year. We don't really know what Matt Stafford is. He's very happy. Um, I thought the Rams looked good. I also thought the Bears' defense is everything that I was worried about because I, I've talked at length about the whole Matt Nagy, Justin Fields, Andy Dalton thing. It is what it is. I'm just going to sit here and watch him tickle us all and play just the tip with Justin Fields coming in every now and then to do like a shovel pass or he had a touchdown run, which was electric. Uh, that is what it is. I have been worried for a while. Oh, is that my computer? Yes. I have been worried for a while that the defense was going to age and it was going to start looking bad. I don't know what happened to the secondary. I don't know what happened to Eddie Jackson. But there were plays in that game that looked like the Bears were a college football team where you're like, wait, is there a safety on the field? I don't. I can't tell if there is. So all my worst nightmares in that respect have come true. The Bears can never, ever have a good offense and a good defense at the same time. It is actually impossible. So if Justin Fields becomes the guy, which I hope he does, of course the defense is going to age the way it does and basically have no pass rush, no secondary, and everything falls apart. But if, but if Justin Fields is good and he's able to yeah. use his feet and no. get around, yeah. they're going to eat up more time, so at least the defense won't be tired all the time. Yeah. That's a bonus. There I, we go. I mean, if you you would rather, though, have one unit that's really, really good and one bad than just have two average units because yeah, then, just, then you just get confused and you don't know what's going to show up in a given week. Here's a crazy thing, PFT, and I, I think we both probably don't know what this looks like, but... What about both being good? No, that can't happen. Right. That's right. that's meant for other yeah. teams that yeah. are I don't know. Competent. It would be cool. That's, it's meant for for teams like the New England Patriots to be able to do that. <laughs> Big Cat, we are resigned to be rooting in perpetuity for the most frustrating NFL teams. <laughs> None of that's going to change. Um, I, I did enjoy elements of Justin Fields in that offense, especially in that first drive when they put him in. I thought Matt Nagy was a genius for a second. For a second, I thought he was a genius, and he was saying, you know, like, Andy Dalton is going to start week one no matter what, and then he'd turn the reins over Justin Fields halfway no. through the very first no. drive. No. Turns out Matt Nagy is just as dumb as we thought he was, if not more, because I actually think the dumbest thing that Matt Nagy did tonight was in the fourth quarter when they were down by, what were they down, like 17, seven? 13, 20, I but, don't know. But they could have kicked a field goal. They were down 13. They could have yeah. kicked a field goal to make it a 10-point game at that at that time. Instead, they went for it on 4th and 15, got a lot of plays in the playbook for 4th and 15, and then ran a route that took the receiver to like 13 yards. Correct. And then didn't bring Justin Fields in for the last drive when the game is already at hand and might as well get mm -hmm. him some in-game reps. It was galaxy brain shit because he said, I'm starting Andy Dalton. I'm going to piss everyone off. I'm starting Andy Dalton. We promised him the job in March. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, I'm going to put Justin Fields in, but I'm also not going to let him get a rhythm. I'm also not going to really let him throw. He did throw once. He, mm -hmm. he completed his first pass. I guess technically twice because there was the shovel pass as well, yep. which was a throw. Uh, I'm not going to let him throw. I'm going to I'm gonna let him use his feet once with the touchdown, but I also am not going to use him in spots like fourth and four when Andy Dalton can't get a first down with his feet and, it, and Justin Fields would be the perfect guy to be in there. I'm going to use Andy Dalton. It is. Again, he is the the moment has always been too big for Matt Nagy. I really do think the double doink murdered his brain. The fact that he spent the next you know entire training camp practicing from the exact spot that the double doink happened from mm -hmm. that was the sign of a guy who like he he just he he needs uh it's like Bill Murray and fucking what about Bob he he's the crazy one he's yeah. the you you're the crazy guy dude like you you can't figure this out so. Whatever. Andy Dalton's a nice guy. Matt Nagy, it's fine. The Bears, there was a moment in the game where I was like, they're not as bad as I thought they were, and then they ended up losing by 20 points, and they are just as bad as I thought they were, and again, the defense is going to be bad. I have something more important to talk about, though. What, what does 
Chris Collinsworth and Matt Nagy. What's going on there? So I think it's just because Andy Dalton used to play for the Bengals. Is I th- that it? I think that Chris has like a thing for a former Bengal that got away, and he's openly rooting for Andy Dalton because he saw Andy Dalton bring competent quarterback play to the Bengals, which is a rare thing in Cincinnati. So I think Collinsworth is now going out on a full limb. Co- Collinsworth's prep was so, what's the word, fastidious? Is that the SAT word? On uh, on Andy Dalton, and he was so prepared to talk about Andy that he didn't even know what Matt Stafford's wife looked like. It, Did you see that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Chris was like, all blondes look the same from behind to me. I don't yes. know. I can't tell them yes. apart. It was, what were you going to say, Hank? It was crazy. Well, no, I was going to say you during the game, you were like upset at Chris Collinsworth, and you were like, find out what he did. Yeah, no, I, I made memes go find out. I was like, find out how Chris Collinsworth and Matt Nagy know each other. Because but the only listen, thing that made sense is the Cincinnati thing. Cincinnati, also Matt Nagy went on Chris Collinsworth's podcast, and I like Chris Collinsworth, but it was crazy how much he was supporting Matt Nagy's decision and being like, Justin Fields doesn't know how to read a defense. Dude, he played at Ohio State. He played major, major college football. He's like not stupid. He knows, of course, there's rookie shit that he probably will make mistakes. Zach Wilson made some mistakes today. I'd rather, if I were a Jets fan, I'm happy that Zach Wilson was out there making those mistakes Mm -hmm. because he'll learn. It was just, it blew my mind. I don't know what Chris Collinsworth and Matt Nagy's relationship is, but it reminded me of, uh, and you guys might not remember this, but I think Bears fans will remember this. John Gruden on Monday Night Football, I think it was like 2013 or 14. Just completely shitting on Jay Cutler because John Gruden used to have Mark Trestman on his coaching staff Mm -hmm. and essentially just spending the entire broadcast being like, Mark Trestman's trying his best, but the guys are, you know, his quarterback does not know what he's doing. And just sitting there being like, what the fuck is going on? Why can't you just call this how it is? Like, Mark Trestman, not a great coach. And Matt Nagy. Not starting Justin Fields doesn't need an entire broadcast having someone defend him the way that Chris Collinsworth did. Yeah, and if there's one thing that we will not stand for on this show, it's people that do a podcast being biased towards their guests. But admit on. it. We will we would never do we anything. We admit like our that. bias. We admit we admit it. We admit our bias. Very, when we're biased, we openly. tell you when we're biased. We say when we're biased. Right now and also we're not on like we're not doing Sunday night football. I think it's a little different. I'm being biased right now in everything that I say. Yes. You should not listen to me and expect any sort of neutrality. I'm not but, Switzerland. Wait, but if if Chris Collinsworth is biased on his podcast. I don't give a fuck. That's his podcast. Right. This is a broadcast yeah. where he's like basically telling us we're, Justin Fields isn't able to start in this game and anyone who thinks otherwise is an idiot. Yeah, the only thing that he was nutting over harder than Andy Dalton was that circle video board that they had. There. Yes. Just amazed by a circular television. And also the quote that he used for Sean McVay, which I'm not going to put on Collinsworth. I'm going to put on McVay, where McVay said, uh, we love Jared Goff. He set up the Rams to be a franchise good enough that Matt Stafford would want to come here. That was the most brutal thing you can say it's, about a guy. It's essentially it's the like meanest. it's the it's the it's uh, the uh, woman being like, yeah, my husband was so nice to me, and he taught me how to learn and how to find a new boyfriend that can give me great sex. Exactly. Or, or yeah, or like a guy just being like, this. listen, my, my first wife got me to the place where I was comfortable and confident enough in myself yeah. where I could go out and hit on other chicks. Yeah, like so you shout talk- out to her. She did a great job. We appreciate her time that she spent here. It's a girl breaking up with you and being like, you taught me how to love mm-hmm. and how to respect myself. Yeah, All <laughs> listen, all the pictures that I put of us on Instagram together that made other girls be like, yeah. holy shit, this guy, this guy is nice enough and normal enough that he can have a girlfriend now i'm interested yeah in him. you taught me that i would like more than two inches <laughs> yeah okay so you taught me some great lessons that i need to that i need to to think of myself my own self-worth as higher than i was when i was with you uh-huh that's essentially what jo- sean mcveigh said so it was a very uh, mean, that hurt my feelings that hurt thing i hope jared goff wasn't listening who played well today in the second half but uh yeah so that was the game sucks the bears are going to be bad this year i'm not going to let it affect me week in and week out. That's the one nice part is that I my expectations could not be lower so that you can't get hurt as much when you mm-hmm. really don't expect anything. And guess what? We'll get to everything else, but still in first place in I the think, NFC North. I think the Gin Blossom said that if you don't expect too much from me, you might not be let down. Yeah, there we go. It makes sense. I'm, the, I'm okay. The only problem I have uh, with the Rams' performance tonight, because I think they played a pretty good all-around game of football, uh, they have too many captains on offense. Too many captains. They've got uh, Whitworth on the line, mm-hmm. Cooks, Cooper Cup, 
and Matt Stafford are all captains. All I don't. Captains. I don't like seeing all those C's. Out also, their uh, their end zones too too many colors. It is. Yeah. And like I, I like the idea. It's a throwback. It's cool, but it just it looks fake. Well, the problem is like the first three yards of the end zone are it's a yellow stripe that runs across the field. It makes it look like you're not right. even in the end zone. Yet. Right. Right. I don't so, like, like sometimes teams do that at the back of the end zone. Yeah. You think they're out of bounds. You think that you have to go further to get in than you really do. Yeah, no, but the Rams are really good. That was a, that was two mismatched teams, uh two teams going in opposite directions, mm-hmm. and that's what we got for Sunday night football. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to some other games. Um Oh, one last thing about the Bears game. That first that first like five minutes was so fucking funny. How they ran the ball back, nice run back. David Montgomery, who's awesome. I fucking love David Montgomery. He makes me happy. Then they get all the way down to like the four yard line. Andy Dalton throws an interception, and then Matt Stafford throws a bomb, and it was like game over. Four minutes into the game was a whole game. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm out of breath. I can't handle this.